Cool, yeah, that's Mute. All, good. all right. Cool. Yeah, I'm muted. Are you ready? Give me a beat. Are you ready, Geggy? Give, <clears throat> give me a slow beat. Hi, my name is Jan. Welcome to my cotton candy store. Welcome to my shop. I've got cotton candy just living on walls. You just want to engulf yourself with the cotton candy and put it in your nipples. You want to be consumed by the cotton candy so I can feed my building. Because you see, my building has a mind of its own. Does it? It does. Mind of its own? It does. It's got like seven brains. Wow. I know. I, I feel like it's got six brains too many. Yeah. But then when you look at him, if, when you look at him from the inside out, you're like, dang. He kind of needs all those brains. Yeah, I know. My building doesn't even have one brain, I don't think. Man, that's bullshit. Yeah, so when I talk to it, it doesn't even talk back or anything. No, mine, mine is a little too sassy. Yeah? Like it, it retaliates a little a little too good. Gives you some attitude? Uh, yeah, he's he's the tood with the, in the hood. We should specify that when we say our buildings, we mean the ones that we're squatting in. At, Pretty much. At the current moment, because they're not actually ours at all. No, uh, but every Nothing now and again, ours. we do find a boxcar. Yeah, we do, because we're your boxcar buddies. Welcome back to the show, babies. I'm your uh, second host, Gurgery, and, and this is our first host. Donald. Do- Donald? Yeah. Do-, do need? Yeah, that's me. Thanks for coming back. Yes. Uh, we have a... Uh, I like that this boxcar is wooden. We've had mm. almost all metal boxcars up to this point. And this one is, the smell of it is, I mean, there's a lot of different smells in it's here. It's vintage. But yeah, I mean, you could. there's history in here, mm-hmm. man. This is like 50s, shipping goods across the country kind of stuff. Old economy. Love it. Mm-hmm. This is like ancient locomotives. Mm-hmm. Like when it was just cardboard boxes. Totally. Before even cardboard. Like I think. didn't exist. This might have even been robbed a few times, you know, like on, uh, like by cowboys. I think it has too. I mean, look look at the the blood on the wall right there. It says yep. we have been robbed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then there's all those tally marks underneath. So you presume. Many Do you think times... that's how many days they've been robbed, or how many days this guy lived here? Hmm. Maybe a combo. Yeah, I could see both. Dang. I could see both of that. Yeah. So this is a storied storied box car, and I the sound is nice. Um, I also like that. The hole toward the back is, is I'm getting a nice breeze. And uh, since we're near um, some kind of cookie factory mixed in with this burnt wood and all the history, I'm getting a bit of a waft of... It smells like grandma's house. Yeah, If it grandma does. lived in a sawmill yes. and baked a lot of cookies. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, quite, it's quite nostalgic. I'll say that for this box, mm-hmm. given the history and, and grandma and all that. Gam Gam. Oh, poor Gam Gam. You ever, I ever always wanted to know, like, what happened to your Gam Gam? You've always been kind of silent about it. Well, I mean, that's because it was kind of a, a messed up experience. But, you know, we're, we're pretty close now, I guess I can say. Um, you know, when when I was just, uh, when I was first homeless, like first becoming homeless, and I, you know, like lost my, my job in the city and, and my wife left me and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, my grandma was, you know, so I was about 25, 26 at this point. And my grandma uh, just got back from a cross-country plane flight. Oh. Uh, she's uh, sort of an Amelia Earhart type. She, you know, likes to fly single-engine planes and do all these kind of, like, challenges. Like, just, just flying isn't cool enough for her anymore. She likes to actually, like, she'll only do it with, like, half a tank of gas, or she'll do it dragging, She's a bit like, of a daredevil. Yeah, yeah, she wants to, like, drag some, you know, like, maybe a crate full of supplies for, like, orphans or, you know, starving people down in some some messed up area of the country. And like she'll Ohio? Just, yes, like Ohio, and she'll just drop the crate of supplies as she flies over and stuff, and so, yeah, she was really cool, and then, uh, and then, um... One time after she got back from one of those cross-country plane uh, trips, she uh, had a brain aneurysm at Damn, the breakfast table. What a shame. Like, yeah. Right there at the breakfast table? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was eating, um, what are those, those with the frog? 
on the cereal box, the smacks, I think it's, is that what they're called? Uh, the give them a smack. Yeah. I, those are, they're horrible. I can't, uh, I can't eat them anymore. They're the, uh, they're the cereal shapes like, uh, cloacas. Yes. Yes. They look like little clits, <laughs> little clitori, clitorati. Clitorti. Yeah. So, uh, Clitortolini? anyway. Clitortolini. Clitortolini. <laughs> Ooh. I'm getting so hungry. <laughs> I mean, we haven't eaten in days. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm always hungry, I guess. Anyway, that's what happened to my grandma, brain aneurysm, and which just, it, it's terrifying because that can happen at any time. Can't really prevent them. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, I feel like you can prevent them. Just but, don't have a brain. Just yeah. give up your brain, you know? Well, you know what would suck is if this if my building that I've been squatting in actually had a brain aneurysm, because it isn't just like one brain, it'd be like seven. Exactly. And it's your, what happens to a building when it's brains and your eyes? I think they melt. The whole building? The whole building. Raiders of the Lost Ark style? Like imagine like you got a big solid bar of chocolate and you just melted it with the magnifying glass and the sun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Taking a break from all the ants you just massacred. Yeah, I mean, so it's like a genocide. Someone's got to do it. We got to balance out. The we do have ant to. to human ratio. I know people don't understand that. I mean, I've been doing my part. Why isn't anyone else doing theirs? They don't see, I think, the amount of ants or insects that we see on a regular basis, which is why they're not freaking out about it the way we are. Yeah, I mean, before I uh, before I chose the life of homelessness, I was a uh, ant engineer, meaning I would you know kill ants with engines. Oh, yeah. So essentially, I would That's just a fun job. I would I would pull out car engines and I'd just kind of go to an ant hill and I'd smash it. Yeah, just drop it right on top and be like <laughs> assholes and leave. Man, but sometimes those ants got really smart. Yeah, I bet they did. So instead of just rebuilding their hill, they just started becoming one with the engine. Yeah, and that's when the very first ant hill engine was found it and well i was out of a job yeah but i suppose that's the way of things isn't it machines eventually eliminate the need for human intervention and those they're gonna... crafty sons of bitches are smart yeah i mean they've got six legs we've only got four i know i've thought about that a lot mm-hmm. and then spiders same logic they're even smarter yeah they've got eight uh-huh. But you know what? Spiders are kind of like reclusive. They, they kind of like, they kind of like to chill out in their own. They're introverts. Mhm. But if you, you know, they're they're cool in their own way. You just kind of got to find some common ground with them. Yeah, but ants, they're militaristic. Yeah, they don't really have personalities. They're total drones. They're like know? uh they're like the uh the communists of of the bug world. Right. They're just, they don't have any ambitions. Ambitions. They don't have any No. No. <laughs> They don't have. They don't have no things. No ambitions. They, they don't. They don't know. They don't have anything they want to do. They don't have a reason to break rank. All they do is like listen. They just feel that little like queef from the queen, and they just go off and do their thing. Well, I feel like the the, the queen probably has. Whoa! What was that? Was like, that was the queen queefing. Damn it! To all the ants. She's so loud. Well, I, she's got to reach like the whole population. Yeah. You know, the whole hill. And and they only tell by scent. Yeah. And and tell a. Interference yeah. with their antennas. Their phalangi. Mm-hmm. Their flangies. Mm-hmm. Well, in any case, uh, what we like to do here at the Boxcar Buddies is uh, we find content and media that helps distract us from our horrible, horrible, lonely, sad lives. And uh, we like to share what we've come across. And Donald, I would yes. love to hear what you've been twiddling around with. Absolutely. I would like to tell you... Um, well, go on. I will. I will. And uh, I would. I would just just like to add on to what you had had said, Greg. That you know, when we meet up every week, it's it's nice, and I I obviously love seeing you and yeah, getting to commiserate with you. But you know, and even it's the, though it's the only time of the week where we aren't exactly like at each other's throat for food. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Among the rest of Chicago's homeless population, just you know kill or be killed you know starving desperation i mean it's the it's the hobo way so it's true and everybody has their own everyone has their own battles they're fighting everyone's got their own degree of you know depression to fight off and that's why we have content that people use to escape the drudges of the daily and so regardless of what you're having an issue with or what's what's giving you trouble or keeping you up 
we like to talk about the things that uh, that you know we get into, and uh, and hopefully take some take some joy in that stuff. We can't uh, buy any of our content because we're homeless and we don't have any money. But we don't advocate uh, any of the acts that we do to consume these contents. No, the, uh, what we do is a fight for survival. Yeah, most likely, if you are listening to this, you have money. We certainly hope so. Anyway, we hope. We hope you're not stealing anything. Yeah, because if, if I you're, find out that you're stealing stuff, especially you cut me a piece. Yeah, especially of your heart, because I'll eat it. Because <laughs> I'm starving, and I do I am need so to fucking hungry. Eat something. I haven't eaten anything since Gollum's legs. Oh, Gollum's! What a meal. Mm. Very grisly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I bet he. I a lot of seafood in there. I bet there's plenty of mercury. Probably tasted like a little bit. Tinny. It tasted like uh, that liquid inside of uh, thermometers. Yeah, yeah, mercury. Mm, yeah, very metallic, mm-hmm. gooey. It burns your insides for about 36 hours. Wow. Mm-hmm. Worth it, though. Am I right? Oh, yeah. It, it fills I mean, me it's, right it's, up. It takes that hunger pain, just kicks it right out the door. Gotta love that. Causes a lot of blood in the urine, though. Oh, but you're, I mean, consider. I mean, considering that you know, your urine's usually pretty bloody, right? Yeah, usually it seems pretty. But sometimes it gets typical. a little. It gets even bloodier. Oh, there's like varying degrees of bloody urine. Yeah, it, like sometimes it reminds me of marinara sauce. Other right. times it reminds me of like just like a light pink. grounded eggplant. Uh, <laughs> the texture, the, the texture, just like it's just it's just kind of very <laughs> thick, yeah, and grainy. <laughs> That sounds very painful to uh But it's so good, Don. Yeah. We don't advocate for the drinking of mercury. No, that me either. Tell that either. This is what happens. You start peeing out a pulpy mess and it's uh it's probably you, do you do you want your dick to shoot out like paper mache? Then <laughs> let me tell you. Stay away from uh don't, thermometers. Don't drink the stuff that's in Don't even trust them. I don't trust thermometers. No, I don't really either. I usually trust uh my good old dials right here on my chest right here. The nips? Oh yeah. Got them out in full force it's, today, I see. And I gotta tell you, it's a cold one. Yes. Oh, those are these yeah, boys are standing for a Attention. Yeah, you could uh, you could you could scrape some messages into glass with that, no problem. I think. I think I think I could kill a man with these. <laughs> well, just like gouge out their eyes. <laughs> just like, excuse me, sir, do I have something here on my chest? Come on! a little closer, a little closer. <laughs> yeah, grab him from the back of the head. <laughs> right, right. We don't advocate for the murdering people with your own nipples. No, that either. That either. No. So anyway, but uh, to your question, Greg, um, I have been. Uh, in the house that I'm squatting in currently, mm-hmm. um, which is on the west side of the city of Chicago, Ooh. uh, lovely little green area, plenty of cracked ends nearby, um, but not too many. And, uh, you know, so I've been in there and somehow on the, uh, on the third floor of the building, almost all the rooms are empty, but one of the rooms has... A bunch of rubble, like on the left, like an unfinished sort of construction project was going mm-hmm. on there. And then on Are the right, fruity? fruity rubble, fruity rubbles. Uh, I haven't t- tasted them yet, but they are multicolored, so Ooh. I would believe that that's a possibility. Yes, mm. and I haven't had any milk uh, that's not spoiled for a long, long time. Well, I mean, every human can make their own milk. Mine's yeah? black. Everything, all your fluids, all your fluids that you shoot are black, except for your blood and your pee, apparently. Yeah, apparently. But uh, there's also a TV on a stand and uh, uh, an Xbox in the- Whoa, uh, no way. In, in this house. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And so I've been trying to keep it pretty secret, too, because- Yeah, of course. It's, I mean, like, as soon as you let someone know, there it goes to the pawn shop. Party's just... over. Party's over. <laughs> Like, you can't even just sit there and be like, all right, it's our secret Xbox. It's no. Like, no, no. It's going to be my secret Xbox. It has to be. Otherwise, as soon as somebody else knows about it, like you said, it's off to the pawn shop. And mm-hmm. they're going to be the ones to eat the food from it. If I get desperate enough to sell it, or if I get hungry enough where I'm going to sell the thing, then that's what I'll do. But that's going to be my decision Or if to you're make. hungry enough to eat it. Yeah, I might do that too. Mm-hmm. Chomp on some, some computer parts. They are crunchy. But so I've been I fired up the Xbox and I've been playing an old favorite Skyrim. Scrim. Scrim. Getting a little bit. I do scrimmy. enjoy some scrim. Absolutely. Throw yourself into the old uh, you know, Tamriel. Got uh 
Got some good stuff happening there, dragons Ooh. and the magic. But now, obviously, Skyrim is uh, an older game. What's new, the new part of it that I've been enjoying, is uh, an, a mod expansion, which has recently just come out. It's called, it's part of like a, a faction of modders, I guess, but this is their first release, and the whole group of them are titled like Beyond Skyrim. Ooh. So I think what their goal to do is build like a uh, build a bunch of different mods encompassing the different parts of the different like so es- essentially turning Skyrim into every other Elder Scroll game. Yes. Yes. So like that for instance that isn't as shitty as uh the Elder Scrolls Online. Yes, it's exactly. That's the fun part of it, is that it's like, it, you don't have to deal with the MMO aspect of Elder Scrolls Online, but they're just adding different provinces of that world onto Skyrim and that platform, which is already oh. built. So the first one that they've done is Bruma, you know, the northernmost city in Cyrodiil. And so it's it's kind of like going back to that part of Oblivion, you know? And at the southernmost part of the map, you can see the Imperial City. Can't go into it yet, but you can look across that water, and there it is, gleaming in the distance. So it's a cock tease little, little it area. Because it it's like, that oh, look, part. We got, you, we got you a bunch of new fetch quests, but over the hill you can see what may come. You hope in, that it does in come. In 20 years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, but there's a ton of new content. There's like... There's uh, three hours of original music. There's like 30 hours of voice acting. There's quest lines, as you said. There's loot. There's uh, there's even a mod so that you have a player mansion. You have a player's like cabin Ooh. modded like within um, the Can you make the Bruma. a casino? I'd love no, a casino. It's, it's not on uh, Indian reservation oh, land. So damn it's, it. Ill- that'd be illegal. Why can't they mod up. that in already? I don't know. They're taking their time with they're that. Afraid of, they're, I'm afraid of the mod ghosts. I'll say that. Mod ghosts? Mod ghosts. Because, like, you're playing a game, and all of a sudden, your game acts up, and it's like, oh, no, it's been haunted, so I have to eat it. Yeah. Well, you could just you backhand it a few times to make it act right, and then... I mean, you, you can. Then you eat it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's usually the, the course. Mm. But please tell me more of this. Uh, there was, there was, scrim- yeah, right. there's... It, it's just... It's cool because it, it's about... All told, there's, I think, four mods, four separate mods that you have to download, and the total space for them is, like, just under two gigs. Ooh. So the problem that I was already seeing is that you have a five gig limit with Skyrim mods on the Xbox. The more of these beyond Skyrim chapters they come out with, eventually, unless they expand the space that they give you for modding, you're going to have to kind of play them one at a time. Like, I'd have to uninstall Bruma in order to play, like, a different city of Cyrodiil. Now, I'm not sure if this is the case with PC2, but I know that uh, Bethesda's been acting a little funky with their mods lately, so... They started this thing called a Creation Club, and the Creation Club is basically, like, they put it into Fallout and they put it into Skyrim, and the goal of it is essentially kind of like how in-app purchases or how the, the game apps make their money. Yeah. The Creation Club is meant to give you content but you actually have to pay for it so i think they they haven't really gotten it to this point yet but i think their goal is to take the best mods which are currently being offered for free and they want to move them over to the creation club kind of like a nexus or like how steam does they want that money they want the money exactly but the stupid part of that is that it's like you can already give money directly to the modders that you like and they're putting out free content all the time. So if you yeah, want to support, it's essentially just Bethesda being greedy. Yeah, they're they, they're they trying your, to. They want your money. They they're trying to insert themselves in that process. They want to they want a piece of it, of course. You know, Warner Brothers is trying to do the same thing with that new Shadows of Mordor. Is that right? Yeah, uh, the way that their like loot boxes work. Um, it's a it's a whole scandal thing right now. Of like, at first, like they had this um, charity loot thing like one of the the developers died during the uh progression of the game so they made him an in-game merchant or something like that Uh uh-huh and it was like 5.99 and the proceeds will go to family the family uh upon reading like the paperwork only a fraction of that money would end up going to the family and then the rest of it it said it just goes somewhere. It's kind of like that. That what happened with uh, I, I think it was like the American, 
No, I don't know if it was the American Cancer Society or American Red Cross. That it was, was Red Cross. Red Cross a few years ago. You remember that when there was a huge mm-hmm. scandal where it turned out that like 90... Which is why it was everyone like, was saying don't donate don't, to you, Red Cross. You, you don't do that anymore. For, for because, the hurricanes. Because like 75 plus percent of the money that they get, it doesn't go to like any of the causes that they said. It goes like, to oh, like oh, their no, share. It will, it will go to the cause like the first couple weeks, but then they'll just be like... Eh, now we're going to have our shareholder party down in Florida, and we want a nice hotel and some fucking Oh, lobster. Florida's fucked up right now. We're going to Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky? We're going to Kentucky. Going to get some bourbon. I'm going to get some bourbon with all these these hardworking people's mm-hmm. money. Real Merca. I hope people die. So you were, you were just talking about um, Warner Brothers doing that with the Shadows of Mordor? Yes. They, uh, they were not... They've got like a loot box thing going on where it's essentially kind of like what Overwatch does where you pay actual money or you use like some weird in-game currency thing to uh, add some extra difficulty essentially or um, give yourself too big of an advantage to beat the game. And the only way that you can actually get the good ending in the new Shadows of Mordor is if you buy one of these loot crates. Ah. So essentially adding to the $60 price tag an extra, I think it was like, I don't know, like $10. Don't ask me. It's very hard for me to come across news information as a homeless person. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I know. I hear you. We try and stay well, you know, up to date with everything, but sometimes but, but you just get trapped. But the thing is, if you just buy the game vanilla, yeah. the way it is, no loot boxes or anything, you don't get the good ending. See, that bothers me because that's bullshit. Because, like, like you were saying, the the one thing they've all, they have always they being like Microsoft or or Sony or or play, you know Just all the big, PlayStation any any big game, developers that make AAA what, releases. What they've always done is they release a vanilla version of the game. You pay your sixty bucks and you grab it, and you get the full story, the full ending, whatever. But then there would also be a collector's edition of that game that would come out, and you'd, you'd at the same exact time. That's yeah, twenty dollars more, twenty thirty that bucks comes more. With like very little, little extras. things like some guns or some uniforms, something some that equipment. essentially gives you like an advantage early yeah. game in the game. Yes, and then you might also get something like a keychain or like a little sculpture outside. You know what I mean? Something real world as like a little totem of like, hey, I thanks for spending. Of Kathy Bates. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for spending the extra twenty-five dollars. Exactly. Thank you. This is going directly into my pockets. Right. Thank you, right. Good sir. But what my point is that no matter what they did, those collectors' editions of those games, they did not. They would never keep. Let's say the good ending, as you just said. They would yeah. never keep like the best content in game. They wouldn't make that exclusive to the collector's edition purchasers. Yeah you would be able to get that just for buying the game. And it really bothers me now that, as you said, it was the same thing with Batman Arkham Knight. Like, mm-hmm. in order to get, like, the full thing of it, the full ending... You have to ending, buy all the DLC shit. Yeah. You, and you that's have, garbage. Ex- exactly, because it's forcing you to... I mean, if you're, if it's about the content, it's about the story, obviously. You want to get to the end and see it the way that the writers really gave it to you, not like some shitty half-assed end of the story. Yeah. I believe, like, I'm not I'm not opposed to DLC because it just means, oh, they get extra money for putting in a little extra work into your game. But it should be content that is either large expansion packs of the game where it adds more story and more missions to do. Yes. Um, or it can be costumes or whatever. Something that you don't need, but it's something fun and cosmetic. Something that you fun want. that you can make, you can yeah, personalize that it That doesn't more. bother me. Like, that's something that uh, recently, like, Persona 5 did where... All the DLC stuff is just cosmetic. You don't need any of it. It's just costumes and like little items that that give you a little bonuses. Fun. Yeah, but More fun. you don't it's... you don't need it. No, and it's not affecting the story of the game, and yeah. certainly not the end. The and and that's the that's the kind thing. of stuff that Bethesda and Warner Brothers are doing. Like Bethesda with mods, because it's like, oh, you want this mod. You, you, we have a cap. Mm-hmm. We can't go that far on this. Mm-hmm. If you had a PC, I think you can extend that because PCs are pretty much limitless and Steam is limitless. Oh, yeah, you definitely could. There's no limits with space limit anyway with PC yeah. and how many mods you can have. 
but it sucks for for anyone who has a console where it's like you're you're kind of stuck with this cap. Yep. If you be if you go over on that cap, meh. Oh well. Womp womp. Sorry. I'm I'm sorry, sir, but you uh you cannot continue with this game until you have paid me twenty nine ninety nine for the ending DLC. If you want any extensions to your video game, please come to my house at 7346 Evergreen Terrace. Wow. You'll find me on the front lawn. I'm the one with the shotgun and a bucket full of spiders. Wow, this is such a weird end of the game. I wasn't warned about this at all when I bought it. Who now, are you? My name is Terrence. Terrence Moneyworth. Now please, follow me inside my building, and I'll show you how to get the ending DLC. Okay. And then he murders him. <laughs> wow, that sucks. Wow, what a story. That's what you get but for buying But that's what DLC. happens. That's what happens when you buy DLC. You get murdered. You get, Terrence brings you into his house, and he murders you. Terrence is with a, a... With a bucket of spiders. Wow. We, I mean, we already explained why spiders are smart. They're smart, yeah. I wonder how Terrence motivates them. Well, is it like Willard with I, rats? I pay them with Charlton Chews. <laughs> That's where those are going. I was like, I see Charlton Chews still on store shelves, but I'm like, everybody I talk to, nobody love, nobody wants them. What the spiders do, but they cannot open them because the rappers are too powerful for them. Terrence, who are you affiliated with? Are you with Warner Brothers? Are you with Bethesda? Who I are you am with? with God. Wow. Wow. You are with God. I am. I pray to him every night and tell him, my lord, I have sold over 300 DLC box sets. And limited editions of Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, my. And does he ever say anything back to you? Sometimes. One time I heard him say, eh. <laughs> you and, took, said, and you took some encouragement from that? I did. That means that he noticed me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Anyway. Man, wouldn't that suck when you try to talk to God and you're like, God, I did all this great stuff for you. And you just hear him like... You like you see him like look over his shoulder and then he just goes back to whatever the fuck he's doing. Yeah, and just, yeah, I eh. would. It's what I, yeah, exactly. It would. It'd be you know, I, I, just just imagine like coming, coming across the path of God or like having that like have and it being such. You a find huge you find letdown. him at your local Starbucks. Yeah, he's just he's just sitting there. He's got his latest issue of uh, National Enquirer. He's got like a man bun, sandals. He's just like <laughs> total hipster, and then he's and he's just like a total piece of crap. Doesn't give a damn about like what you or you're doing. You're just, oh my. You're like, oh my, oh my God, God it's God. You're, you're God, it's you. Yep, yeah, it's me. it's me. What's up? Hey, God, uh, I, I've been like praying to you every night, and, and I don't know if you've seen like any of my messages. Oh, listen, man, I get a lot of uh, a lot of people praying to me all the time. It's kind of, you know. Hey, no, God, I, do you I mind if we have a, uh, have a selfie together? Uh, actually, I really don't do that. I mean, too late. I mean, I already brought, look, I, my yeah, Snapchat I, I is just, really, really popular. I've you, got like three followers. That's great, but I just, I destroyed Look, well, Look, I got the dog See filter that? app on. You look like a dog now, God. You know what do dog yes. is backwards. Yes, I do. It's God. That's a great joke, and I'll tell you, it gets funnier every time I hear it. But listen, my latte is ready, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it. Wait, God, here, right? God, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, can, it's great seeing you, though. Uh, God, can I call you later? Please don't. God, wait, please. Yeah. That oh, would God, be, no. Would, <laughs> just crushing. Just absolutely crushing to you. Soul crushing. And there you are on the floor of a Starbucks just wondering, like, oh, what do I do now? Where do I go from and here? And that's one from out of a dark alleyway. Hi. Yes. Hello. <laughs> this is my older brother, Florence. Hi. I am, I am Terrence. Hi, Terrence. We noticed that you are having some problems trying to reach out to God. We can help with that. How? Well, sign here, and we'll show you the way to salvation. Also, make sure to log on to the PlayStation Store in order to download the Silver Box Collection of Assassin's Creed Origins, only a hundred and forty nine ninety nine. Small down payment up front required. I don't think I have that kind of money. Do it! Oh, God! Oh, my nipples! 
He's quite the sucker, isn't he? You know, mother always, mother said that he practically gnawed her teats off. <laughs> oh boy! All right, so what, so this is so a, what, this is the DLC what, trade, what and is, we are we are trying to inform you what it's like on the street. You'll find Terrence and Flarence somewhere. Yeah, so just be on the lookout for that. The moment you download your first expansion on any game, they they're made aware, and you're on their radar mm-hmm. after that. They'll they don't find like, you, and they don't let go. No, they don't. So, Greg, what have you uh, what have you been consuming content wise? So, uh, so last week. I went out and uh, I slept behind uh, this old antique shop here on uh, on Milwaukee, and it was it was great. Like the first couple nights, I'm like, I'm just gonna sneak in here, sleep in a bookshelf, and I'll be good for the night. Mm. Well, one of those nights, I accidentally knocked over one of the lamps. Ooh! But the lamp didn't break. It's made of like a solid copper. The so ball? I went over to it and I, I noticed if there were any dings. I Made sure to wipe it down when all of a sudden a genie popped out of the lamp. Oh, what? And I was like, whoa. You lucky. So, so Why are you still homeless? So so he comes out and he says, you have freed me from my prison and now you shall enter mine. Oh. So he placed me into the lamp. Whoa. Because the, the lamp has to have somebody the, in it. The lamp needs a host. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, he just kind of just, he put me right in there. Genies don't actually work like the way they do in Aladdin. Hmm. Instead of giving you three wishes, they just kind of do a body swap. They're like, I was once like you, but now I am you. Ugh, and no Robin Williams either. Nah, no Robin Williams. It was more like Sinbad. Oh, what a letdown. I know, seriously, Mandela effect. Jesus Christ. So. So you're sitting in the lamp. uh, So I was stuck in the lamp when I noticed he had a PC set up. Hey. Like, and he he had pretty decent Wi-Fi. He had uh, had RCA, so I was like, okay. That'll do. This is fine. It'll do in a pinch. You got access. I uh, I log on to a Steam, and sure enough, I see it right at the top with only four minutes played. Cuphead. Oh, get out of here. So I just logged onto that sucker, and for the, the four days that I was trapped inside the lamp, mm-hmm. I played Cuphead. Ugh, you, and I, I'm so jealous. it is phenomenal, Donald. Really? Phenomenal. So, uh, for those who don't know, Cuphead is a run-and-gun game, very much like a classic Contra, uh, but everything looks like... <clears throat> How rude! I'm sorry. Uh, a 1930s cartoon. Yes, the Steamboat Willie style. Yeah, right? so it it was inspired by Steamboat Willie and Flacher style rubber hose styled animations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's so so fucking good. I can't I can't get over how good this game is. Man, that sounds fun. Between the presentation, uh, the gameplay, the fact that it's seventy five percent boss rushes, Ooh. just makes it so good. I'd easily put it up there as one of my favorite games of the year. Probably my favorite soundtrack of the year. Oh, nice! Because uh, the entire soundtrack is just jazz. Oh, hell it's, yeah! It's all in studio recorded jazz, and it's incredible. Uh, this is one of the most beautifully styled games I've ever played. And I mean, I feel like it was worth the wait because I know that this was showcased at, uh, E3 in like 2014. It's been a while. It's been about three or four years. And the change from when they first revealed it to what it is now. Holy shit. There's just so much effort in. All the character animations, all the backgrounds are are water painted and look exactly like uh, old school 1930s golden age cartoons. Man, uh, and there's there's a lot of customization that you can do with all your characters in terms of like the weapons they use, the special abilities, uh, because uh, essentially like the easiest way to play it is it's just run and gun, hold down the gun button, and you just shoot. But but your shooting sounds like you're snapping your finger. So it's like... Oh, that's great. It's hilarious. Uh, but you can upgrade it to a spread shot. You can do a charge shot. You can do like a bubble shot that bounces, but it does a ton of damage. Nice. Uh, 
There's a lot of variations to your shots. You can have your dash uh, make you invincible when you are dashing. Ooh. But the problem is you don't see where you're landing. Oh. So you can actually run into something. It's like high risk, high reward uh, dashing. Interesting. Uh, you get three super abilities. So after you, when your power meters are fully charged, you can unleash this big special attack. One is... One is you shoot out milk from the top of your head in like a like a horizontal spiral. Like all humans. Yeah. Uh, another one is you become invincible for like 10 seconds, which is really good against like certain attacks. Oh, I bet. And then the final one is you make like a big buff ghost version of yourself <laughs> that just pops above you and then just like suplexes around the screen for like five seconds. It's super, super good. Sounds very fun. And I know that everyone is up in arms about like how tough it is, but that's kind of the point. Yeah, and I also I I mean I think you and I come from, you know, an older generation of gamers where we remember Sega games growing up and Nintendo games. Altered Beast on Sega was a game I have literally Ooh, yeah. played for 30 years. It is unbeatable. <laughs> I personally like I I would like to see a return to like harder games because I feel like games there's so much effort put into them now understandably so between the voice acting the animation they want to showcase all of it so there there's a tendency to kind of hold you by the hand and guide you through the story with it's a like, lot of these new games you, this is the next place you go to go yes. to the waypoint on the map yes it's Whereas kind of very just, easy this is like all right you learn the patterns you get used to the patterns you beat the boss because like Nine times out of ten, you will never beat the boss on your first try. Yes, yeah, never. I like that. I, I, I. That's kind of the whole. If there's a, it, there are a few benefits I believe to playing video games, and I think one of them is the lateral thinking, yeah, the problem solving abilities, because you don't beat a game by repeating behavior when it doesn't work. Yeah, when by you, doing the same patterns over and exactly, over. Exactly. You, you have to adapt. You go to a boss, you try something, it fails. So you, you pop up again after dying, and you try something different. And that is, I, I believe, like, I mean, it, it's very it's very beneficial in real life to have that kind of thought process yeah. when you're attacking obstacles. Adaptability. To try yeah. Without, like, that's why that's why I'm not a fan of, like, a whole lot of, like, roguelike games, mm -hmm. if you've ever played them. So, like, Rogue Legacy, Flint Hook. I like a lot of these games, but because they're roguelikes, you don't, you can't really adapt to level design because everything becomes randomized ah. so like like let's use flint hook as an example because i i played a little bit of, of this through the year uh flint hook has like this way to it where you have to beat four different pirate ships you have to go through platform beat all the bosses and whatever and then get to a boss at the end of those missions in order to progress. Mm. But every room is randomized. You never know what enemies are going to come up. You never know what the platforms are going to be. And uh, the only thing that stays the same is the final boss at the end of it. But you don't you don't get a chance to actually adapt to its play style. Because when you lose, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. And you have to go through all those fucking ships again. Ugh. And I hate that kind of gameplay. It's great when you're like, oh, I just want to play something real quick and, yeah. and and make it random. But when you want to sit down and play something and feel like you're progressing, mm -hmm. those kinds of games are fucking horrible. Yeah. Cuphead is, is a return to form. It's very much like the original Contra. It reminds me of old SNES um, Sega Genesis games where you learn the play style, you learn the boss, you learn the level. And you get better at it. I love that. I miss that in in, in a lot of games now. That's that's refreshing to you. But, and that's that's something that is supposedly bothering a lot of people who want to get into Cuphead. Well, because and that's say, and saying like, oh, oh, you've got like this elitist attitude of, oh, it has to be hard. It has to be great. I'm like, no, it doesn't have to. But the fact I that I just it, like it. Yeah, I it makes like me it. Feel that way. better when I beat it. Yeah, I feel better as a as a player for doing that. Like, it's rewarding. Yeah, I felt that way with like the original Crash Bandicoot. Because that's a yeah. fucking hard game. Yeah, when you sit down and you crank through a game on on hard level and you beat it like after, without even dying many times. There's nothing more satisfying than beating a boss that has been kicking your ass for 
hours absolutely. or days. Absolutely, absolutely. I re- th- those. Why do I remember vividly Kingdom Hearts and and uh, Sephiroth from yeah. that and Ursula and because those things took me like a month to freaking beat God of War, like the bonus levels, literally a mm-hmm. month spent in my basement grinding trying to figure that out. When you beat it, as you said, that is the real sweet satisfaction you get. Yeah. If you sit down and you coast through a game, it you don't feel anything when you beat no, it. No, oh, right, I mean that's still that's bored. That's kind of how. F- I felt with like the last um, Batman game. Uh, what is it? Arkham, Arkham Knight? Knight. Yeah. Because I I liked it for the most part, but it got to a point where I was like, I'm just it's You're just, just I'm just, the same I'm steps. Doing over. another Batmobile battle af- again. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's... Whereas when I when I I remember playing City, I I remember bosses like Mister Freeze because it's so different from everything else. Yep. You don't have to do a beat 'em up, or you don't have to wait. You you don't have to dodge the enemy, wait for him to run into a wall, and then beat them up right which is in like every fucking game like the bane boss fight from uh arkham asylum it was in ultimate spider-man it was in crash bandicoot it was in fucking everything yeah absolutely it's boring it's kind of a this is this is completely different because since it's a 1930s fucking cartoon anything can become anything yeah there's at one point where you're fighting a queen bee but she's like a sorceress so she's shooting magic at you and then at one point during the boss battle her head becomes a ball and chain oh. and then she turns into a a, a fucking fighter plane wow. it, it's it's because of the creativity of 1930s where nothing had to make sense it was just for the sake of fun yeah. or just the sake of the animator saying i want this to turn into this and it can we can do whatever the fuck we want. That's the way that anim- animation is not limited by reality. Right. It can no, be that's, whatever it wants to be. That's the fun of it. Yeah. And that greatly helps out this game. There's one boss fight where you're fighting a pair of boxing frogs. And at one point in the match, they transform together into a giant slot machine. <laughs> And then you have to dodge coins that it's shooting at you. Excellent. And you, and you have to hit the slot machine... And wait until you get like your your lotto number to actually start fucking hitting it again. Wow, it's it's that kind of creativity and that um, dedication to the original art form that is I like phenomenal. That. I like that. I love a lot of the attention to detail too, because there are times where like the color of Cuphead and Mugman's gloves change because it wanted to go for like classic Disney. Where you would see Mickey Mouse sometimes with yellow gloves or white gloves, or sometimes he'd have white shoes and yellow shoes. Right. Uh, I just love I love that attention to detail. It's nice. it's a phenomenal game. All the presentation wise, I think it's probably the best looking game of 2017. Cool. This is coming from a guy who who just had a massive hard on for Persona Five as yes. soon as it came out. Yeah, that's a game I know. You you style. played you played that tons. I played it twice <laughs> so I could get the hundred percent. I had I had to get out of that house real fast. Yeah, so I was I like, know. all right, I have to I have to beat this and then beat it again to get that platinum and then I can leave. I'm going. It's fine. I'm out. I'm out. Took me a month, but I the did animations. It. The, the animations. The animation. The pictures Wasn't are moving now, you see? Oh my god. You gotta be having some fun stuff happening all the time. I see your arms moving up and down. I got the screen flashing. They're coming into the theaters. We're oh, filling them. Oh god, it's moving so fast. The animation style. It's uh, gotta be busy. It's gotta be uh, fun. It's gotta be uh, changing all the time. Uh, Cuphead. It's moving too fast. Cuphead, it's fun. Cuphead is super fun, and if, cool. you, if you don't, if you don't play Cuphead, well, I'm sorry. That's really that's really unfortunate. That's real bad. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah, Geggy. But I was stuck in that lamp for a little too long. Yeah. So how did you end up getting out of there? Did well, he choose to come back? The store owner came by and he rubbed it. And oh. then I came out and said, ha, gotcha, bitch. And I put him into store the Store owner's in there? Wow. And then I slept in the store for like another three days yeah, that's until, great. until the police came it's by. kind of your store now, right? Uh, it was, but uh, a police officer came by Ooh. and he was looking for him. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I've, I've owned this store for years. But I, th- I thought I could use this in my favor. So I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Like the, the lights in here are pretty dim. Can you turn that that lamp on? So he goes over to the ah. lamp and he, and he rubs it a little bit. The store owner comes out and he goes, ha ha! And it puts him into the lamp. Man. And then we both look at each other and we agree never to speak about this ever again. Interesting. I wonder where the genie is right now. I don't know. Vegas. Probably. I think Reno. 
think he's putting on a magic show? Maybe. I mean, he didn't exactly tell me how long he had been in that lamp, but given the smell, quite you, some time. You get the feeling it was a while. Couple centuries. Yeah. No millennia. No ventilation in there, I'm guessing. No. He did have a fan, so that kept me that kept me cool. Hi, I'm your number one fan, Genie. I love you. <laughs> oh God. Oh, please. Let me get your autograph. Of please. Course. Yes. Sign my S- neck. Yeah, stand still. Genie. <laughs> uh, I'm your biggest fan. I love you. By the way, uh, have you seen this lamp that I've been no, what shows? do I do with it? I'll just give it a good old rub. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bitch! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You think that the genie is a serial killer now? Uh, I think it depends on the kind of serial that he's exposed to. I fucking hate you. If it was Smacks, I'm guessing yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I was watching the other day. Uh, I, I This is an older movie, right? This is a little o- older uh-huh. one. Uh-huh. And, uh... I'm sure everybody else has already drawn this conclusion, but um, I was just kind of struck by uh, struck by the movie. Thunderstruck? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. It felt that way. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, now, uh, I, uh, I didn't, I, if I, I feel I didn't like even if I watch... my teeth any harder, they're going to crack. I didn't even uh. watch this whole thing. I, I came in... About a quarter of the way through the movie, maybe like I a third or something. I came in too, and I have three kids now. Whoa! Kathy Bates is on the loose again. <laughs> yeah, she is. Anyway, Wolverine. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. I came in about a third of the way through, and I watched it for about half an hour. Oh my god. It's glorious. It's, it's a how, car crash of a movie. How... Could it possibly have been green lit? There is so much because it about was fucking Wolverine, man. And that's, and that's what I was gonna say. The only thing about it that anchors the whole thing is Hugh Jackman, because obviously he can act and he embodies Wolverine, and he's well. I mean, it was great. that it was that time where like the X Men movies were like, you need to see these. Yeah, like even the third movie was like, yeah, it's it's kind of okay. Brett but, like, Ratner. Ugh. There's parts of it that I like. I like, Parts of it, sure. I like Kelsey Grammer. I love Kelsey beast. Grammer. Yeah, as Beast, he was he was great. But uh, but not this movie. That that movie was was there's the so fir- much. I think the first big giant stinker that comic book movies can become. There there's so much bad about that movie. I mean, not to like first of all the Will I Am acting as as some Nightcrawler wannabe <laughs> mutant where he just teleports for no reason teleports to the fridge to grab a beer and back to the couch like stupidly then his like he's you know horrible acting like hor you know it's like he's telling wolverine musicians some story like y- musicians dude they act a, a certain way it's like, like painful it's like it's, they can't do they can't do movie acting no no not at all like you're sitting there and there is a scene and you can tell that like the character is confessing his motivation to Wolverine. He's supposed to be like, and then I watched him all die. And that's why I said I'd never go back there. But it's like... And, and I said I love her. But, and she was like, I don't love you either. Right. And I was like, but I right. love you. And, and she was like, I don't love you. Wo- wo- and then she teleported away. <laughs> wo- and I followed her. Wolverine, and I followed her for days. Wolverine is like staring at him, like acting well and trying to like react to what he's saying. Because it's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. But Will I Am is just like trying to still be cool it's like he's doing a take for a black eyed peas song in the middle of the movie i think there was a black eyed peas song in that which which makes no sense because the whole movie takes place in the fucking 70s (laughs) (laughs) so nothing better than like the 70s aesthetic when all of a sudden just dink 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 dink. yeah fergie i got a feeling good good night Let's get it started. Right. <laughs> uh, let's get it started. Yeah, here. He's, he's just sitting there. Yeah, so I killed her, and that's what I did. And I ain't never going back again because I didn't like that. And I put her in my time. trunk, and then I drove, and then I drove the car into yeah. a river, and I and I fell in the river, and I drowned. But I didn't drown because I'm a teleporter. So right, I teleport back to my bar. That's why I'm wet though. But it's like you know, it's like <laughs> so. So there's that, and then there's a you know, there's this. Oh, oh, okay. The, the the plot itself, the writing, the script of this thing, 
like the, just not even the scripts, just the screenplay, like the storyboard of it. It's so fucking dumb because it's like the first half of the movie, they spe- they do the experiment on him, they get him to Alkali Lake, they put him under the water, and they graft the adamantium to his bones. Their project and what they did for the setup was make him indestructible. They made him into the Wolverine. Then, literally, it's like he escapes, and they're like, tear his head off, like, destroy him. And it's just like, but what you, you made ta- him instruct- indestructible. I- exactly, exactly. So it's just like colossally dumb. Like, and I, I love the fact that he is, like, as soon as the experiments are done... Like, it takes 10 seconds for them to put the adamantium in. Yeah, in it's like bones. they plugged him in. And then he just goes, this sucks. Yeah, <laughs> he just gets out of the water and he's like, oh, wait, they're, yeah, they, they're like, get him away. And then it's, all of a sudden he's supposed to have heard the people talking across yeah, the room Stryker, Stryker from underwater. Said, like, all right, we have to kill him now. Yes. Like, why? I think, and then one of the workers, I think he heard you. It's like, he says that in the movie. It is so stupid. So then he's, so he's, he's running away. He gets to the barn. There's a bunch of bad jokes, but about like him, like there's that taking scene. a big old giant dookie. Yeah, there's that scene where he makes his claws come out in the bathroom. <laughs> the CGI, and he's on like, it. yeah, the CGI, and he's like comp- rubbing them together in the mirror, <laughs> and it's just like, it's so bad. It's so bad. And then I it's, think it it's peaked. A be- it's a beautiful like disaster. It's it peaked. <laughs> it peaked for me. When he was meeting the Blob character again, there's that moment he goes into the boxing ring and Will I when am it does is the there. close up of the tattoo on his arm and now the the pretty lady mermaid on it is now just this fat disgust. Yes, the, the tattoo itself turned into a BBW. Yes, when it was just a normal fucking tattoo. Before. Yes, exactly, exactly. So it, I mean, it, it, he, that's not how tattoos work, movie. I, I know. Oh I, yeah, his... you know, you know, the tattoo would kind of stay like the same, but it'd have like nasty big purple stretches on it. His whole like the whole CGI aesthetic of that movie was garbage. But when the, Logan goes in there. And he talks to Will I Am, and he's like, yeah, he's, he's right downstairs. He's in a boxing ring. I'm trying to whip him back into shape. He put on a few pounds. What else? And then they go down there, and it's Blob, some you know massive, but it's, human it, it being. wasn't a mutant power. It's just that he got fat. Yeah, they they made it seem like he he depre- he got depressed after the war and gained weight. Like he ate himself. A thousand pounds heavier, and that's now his mutant ability. There's this, right? this restaurant called McDonald's that I just wanted to eat at. But anyway, so Logan gets down there. He's talking to the dude outside the boxing ring, right? And he's trying to get information out of him, and the guy doesn't say anything. And Will I Am said to Logan beforehand, like, don't mention his weight. He's real sensitive about it, right? Then, so Logan says what he always says to people, which is, listen, bub. Right? He's like, you're going to give me the info that I need, Bub, or I'm going to whatever. Somehow, Bub became Blob in Blob's head. Right? Like, the, and then big, they fight. Because he's a big, dumb, fat guy. You I don't guess. understand. Who, doesn't, who can't hear, apparently. And neither can Will I All am. the fat grew over his ears. Yeah, it grew inside. It grew inside the holes. <laughs> It's but, like filling your holes with vanilla pudding. So, like, Logan says, like, all right, listen here, bub. And then he turn, Blob turns around and is like, Did you say Blob? And it's like, no, everybody here heard bub. But then, and Logan here's, here's the thing, and then he Don, runs at it. Here's something for the audience, too. Put put your, your hands over your ears. Now, bub. What do you hear? Bub. I hear bub. Fuck you. <laughs> I hear this Bob. experiment was supposed to prove that, that having fat in your ears turns to blob. <laughs> but I'm covering them. It's, there's, it's not fat in them. It's like my hands Well, your are hands are fat. <laughs> yeah, but but I'm not squeezing them like inside. Bub. Like, bub, 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 bub. It's still bub, and I can see no, your lips fuck you. moving it's got to blob. say bub too. No, no, there's no thing about so, it. I feel like the only way that blob could come out of that is if Hugh Jackman had a speech impediment. Yeah, like, yeah. Listen here, blob. Listen here, blob. Yeah, it's it's that's the only you way. Why did you call me blob? And it's like then then he gets hit, and Will I Am teleports over to him on the ground. He's like. Why'd you call him Blob? And it's like, you didn't hear me either? Like, no, it's so see, dumb. Don, the reason they did that is so you know that they put the Blob in the movie. It's so dumb. 
No. You know what pissed me off to no end of that movie? I went in because two of my all-time favorite comic book characters were in it. Deadpool. Deadpool uh-huh. and Gambit. I know. Those were two major selling points of the movie. It's like, we're going to introduce Gambit, and here's Wade Wilson. I was mm-hmm. like, ooh, that means they're going to set up a Deadpool movie. Uh-huh. And they fuck it. It's horrible. It's horrible. horrible. You got Ryan Reynolds in there, and what do you do? They fucking sew his mouth shut. Hey, you, know what, you know what you the do mouth. with the mouth? Ma- the merc with the mouth is sew, sew his, his mouth, mouth shut. shut. So fuck fucking you. Dumb. Oh, and to say nothing of fucking whoever that whoever the guy who played Gambit was, it's like it's such a shame because like the acting was bad, and then he's just, he just shows up. He's like, I'm just playing a card game. Oh, here's my my card powers. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a jet pilot. Yeah. How? When were you a jet pilot? Right. You're just some dumb Cajun boy that has a lot of charisma <laughs> and plays cards and plays cards. How were you a jet? pilot did you did you bang where did you, did you learn bang it? a jet pilot right and like all right sherry you're gonna show me how to fly this air mon ami mon ami and it's cajun i mean cajun's a tough accent i'll give you that but it's like you're fucking paying you're paid to be gambit you're just, like fucking take some classes listen to a tape mon ami <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyway poor, poor favor yeah so anyway uh if you haven't seen it don't don't see x-men origins wolverine um it was during that dark ages of like oh we want to make more wolverine movies and everyone and, and everyone enough. was like yeah that sounds like a good fucking idea and then two movies happened and they were both bad mm-hmm. but then logan showed up and it's a really good fucking movie i still gotta see that one uh, actually, I adore that movie. I think that's the best X Men movie, hands down. And it's not even an X Men movie. The best X Men movie? I think so. Really? I, like I consider all, I consider everything involving any of the X Men, an X Men movie. Yeah. And fuck, L- Logan is just so good. It's a modern western. Yeah. It's incredible the way it's shot, the the characters, uh, the fact that Professor Xavier is like this fucking alzheimer's patient and then he has like he has massive seizures and every time he has a seizure he has a psychic episode oh god it's that kind of shit where i'm like this movie is so detailed and so well written it's incredible and it's a lot better written than the comic okay i'm not a fan of the comic i'm sold i will old uh, old man old man logan's comic is not great if you've never read it no Uh, i haven't it's awkward because uh someone mind control like in this world, pretty much all the Marvel heroes heroes are killed. Uh, Red Skull kills Captain America, and now Red Skull is wearing his outfit just for to be like because uh, he loves uh, him because he's because, fucking obsessed with him because and I want to have sex with your bones. Yeah, because it's uh, the whole adversarial love story thing. Yeah, but uh, Logan accidentally murders the entire X Men cast because someone put him into a berserker rage, and he thought he was murdering like. The Brotherhood. Uh, he ends up killing all the X Men. Was it Stryker's kid? I, f- I forget. I forget who did it. Um, but the weirdest part of that entire comic book series is the Hulk decides to go evil, and him and She Hulk shack up and have this incestuous redneck Hulk family, where all of their kids are Hulks, all of them. Good lord! And they're like they're they're basically mafia of the South. It was like, you want to pay, you got to pay to the Hulk. You got to pay to Daddy Hulk and Mommy Hulk. Cousins. You want to cross this river, you better pay the toll. The troll toll. That's fucked up. It's super, it's super fucked up, and that's what makes it interesting. But Logan, the movie, is just way more grounded in reality, and it's just super good. It's super fucking good. Mmm. Mm. So that's that's a good Wolverine movie. Okay, so we we've covered the whole spectrum of Wolverine movies. Just oh, now, not not the Wolverine though. Have you ever seen the Wolverine? No, that's the one that came out like three years ago. Uh, it came out in between X Men First Class and Days of Future Past. Uh, I recall the movie coming out. I did. I never saw it though. It's a direct sequel to X Men, uh, the third movie. Oh. Where, you know, Jean Grey's dead yeah. and, and all of them are all fucked up and whatever. And Wolverine gets his adamantium taken away. Uh, How? And be, because some magic machine this Japanese samurai man created and just... <laughs> they did something where he lost his healing factor. And at first I was like, okay, that sounds really good for storytelling. 
Oh, this is so messy. If he loses his healing factor, he would just die. Wolverine's like, he's like, uh, they don't even know how old he is. So if he lost his healing factor, you figure he'd like rapidly age or some shit, wouldn't he? No, no. I, like, I guess I don't, not, th- I don't not think like that would change. Gray, just, yeah. just as soon as you get rid of the healing factor, that just means he can't he's heal He's vulnerable. Himself. Yeah, yeah, he becomes vulnerable. And but then he would still, age normally. But he still has the metal bones yeah. at first. Yeah. So it's like, oh, it hurts him when, when the claws come out. He can't heal the claws again. Uh, and then they take the metal away from his skin and he just goes back to being classic Wolverine of, of the bone, bone claws. claws and they left the movie at that. They're like, all right, you have the bone claws again. We'll see how interesting this gets. And then days of future past happens and he's back to metal claws. Like that movie never fucking happened. Oh, the continuity. The continuity is horrible. And, it, and, and that's claws. coming from a person who actually really liked days of future past i like that movie a lot i like that movie too i like uh i like um what was it? first class i like first days class of and days past. of future past are great yeah yeah definitely the uh the quicksilver scene in days of future past is like it's amazing time in a bottle i mean it's and, the, and the sad thing is they tried to recreate it for apocalypse i know it's just, although it's it's da- <laughs> apocalypse stanker. apocalypse is a horrible movie but yet even though it's a shadow of that scene in days of future past it's still that the quicksilver scene in apocalypse is still the best part of that movie yeah hands that's down. true that's hands down and that and it's a sad thing that that's the case because, yes uh i kind of wanted more from him I'm I'm interested to see what they're doing with New Mutants because they're making it a horror movie. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, because Fox Fox is going away from the Marvel method and the DC method of can't be found superhero movies. You got to overcome evil after Deadpool because it's essentially like no, no, we're gonna make gritty, cool action movies mm-hmm. or something completely fucking different. Right, right. At least just just break the rinse and repeat of those you know template scripts of the superhero movies. That anybody doing that, I'm I'm into it. I'm into it for sure. Remember when uh, when you were saying Bone Claws, it made me think of uh, Macho Man in the Spider Man movie, the original one. You remember the Bone, bone Saw? <laughs> and he came out and he was like. He had his, like, his fingers were so tiny, and he was like, I got you for three minutes! Three minutes of plate time. Uh, my, my name is the Human Spider. Step into a Slim Jim! <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Why do you sound like this old 90s wrestler that I once masturbated to? <laughs> I'm ready! We're gonna get you here, Is that brother. is that Macho Man Spongebob? I'm ready! It's the best day ever! <laughs> and then you have would, an would John Cena be plankton? Yeah. I'm stealing the Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> be, 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 be. Definitely, John Cena. Yeah, or or Undertaker maybe. Uh, Undertaker could be a. Uh, I feel who like would be Patrick. Under- Patrick, uh, oh, oh shit. SpongeBob. I think he would be the Undertaker. That'd be the funniest because he's already got the pointed head. So all yeah. he has, all he does is he puts on the hat brim, and there's no top to the hat. It's just his head. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, I'm the Undertaker. I'm gonna bury you. Oh wait, no, I'm Patrick. <laughs> Man, see, we shouldn't, we shouldn't write this because, like, uh, they're they're trying to merge wrestlers into like every kid's cartoon now. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you seen, like, the Hanna-Barbera wrestler specials? No. Ooh. Ooh, Donnie. Don boy, these are bad. Hanna-Barbera. There's, like, there's like three Scooby-Doo ones, one with the fucking Flintstones, and they did a Surf's Up sequel, but it's all WrestleMania guys. It's John wow. Cena, Undertaker. Are they doing the voice acting? Or yes. Like... Oh, good God. It's Vince McMahon. <laughs> He's an otter. And the only thing he wants to do is drink fish. Where's that? I have to find a way to drink fish. That sounds odd. Uh, that sounds man. We gotta put special. We gotta put uh, WrestleMania into X Men. That sounds like a special kind of bad. Think about it. The Undertaker's special ability is to put you in your grave. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. John C- John Cena's as he transforms into a, a monster truck. Like a uh, transformer. Or or like monster trucks. Transformer. You know, you know, Monster Trucks, the the, the movie that came out in, in January. I saw that. That made me sad. What? Monster Trucks. Monster Trucks. It was a kids movie. Oh my goodness. And it's about a bunch of octopus aliens that live inside the hollowed remains of of pickup trucks. Scientology, right? Monster Trucks. 
They use their they tracks. use their they use their electric uh, noodle appendages to power the car so it can drive. But they don't know how to drive. They don't know our laws. Um, but they become the laws. And then and then the guy in the steering wheel, he's like he still steers it. And the brake pedals uh, are essentially kick them in the back of the head to be like, this is what we need to do, monster truck. And the monster truck just goes. Blah, 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 blah. That sounds that's great. Sound that sounds great. Mm-hmm. I wish I had kids I could go take to see that. It made me want to uh, reach into my asshole and keep climbing in there until I uh, didn't s- expand into nothing. Yeah. I always think about that too, like the snake eating its tail. And it just keeps on and consuming Erebus. until it's just... Well, um, speaking of snake eating its tail, I think we've got to find some grub to uh, to eat because I'm starting to pass out here. I yeah, can, man. I can feel my uh, my energy stores completely depleted. Well, uh, why don't we go to that antique store? Maybe we can find something to snack on. Okay. Maybe we, you know what? Maybe ooh. You feel like uh, hanging out in a genie's lamp for a couple days? He did have a fridge. <gasps> Fuck yeah, oh, dude! Man. I'd, I'd hang out with let's I'd hang it. out in the genie lamp to get oh, this fridge. All right, man, let's go. All okay. right, we're we're gonna head off to this antique store. We're gonna we're gonna find this genie's lamp again. Hopefully, it's not sold. Yeah, that'd be really that'd be a bummer because we're gonna have to chase that down. Then I don't know if like fridges and shelter that's just waiting around for us. I mean, it's two birds one stone. Let's do it, baby. Can there be two occupants in the thing at once? Uh, I think if we just hold on to each other, really if we hard. rub it together. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's try it out. And worst case scenario, one of us breaks their hand because it gets stuck in the lamp. Spliced, I was thinking. No. Or what if like half of what each of us makes part it? Genie? Yeah. What if we become part of each other? Like it meshes us into one oh, person. Oh, dude, that'd be kind of tight. That'd be fun. I feel like I'm in your head, like kind of already. So I feel like maybe if we were just sharing a body, it'd be have dope. you been controlling my brain? Not intentionally. I know the Terrences do. Yeah. Remember October twenty seventh. Go and grab Assassin's Creed Origins on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Store. No. If you buy, if you buy at least three loot crates, I'll come into your home and I'll rub your feet so you can safely fall asleep and think about climbing perches and jumping into hay barrels. And I, if you don't sign it, will come to your home and eat your flesh. That was good. That's a, that's a good threat. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad that we finally get together sometimes and talk about this, Florence. Me too, Terrence. You're a good brother. I know. You're a good brother. I know. And love you're, you. I love you too, Florence. Mother would be so proud. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> and then they fucked. And then they fucked because that's what brothers do. <laughs> that's what brothers do when no one's looking. 